Welcome to the Vet and Create Academy, where we discuss veterinary emergency and critical care and science-based tools for veterinary professionals. Have you ever managed a case of a dog or cat with gas inside the walls of the stomach or intestines? This condition is called gastrointestinal pneumatosis. But how do you treat it? Medically or surgically? What causes it? And what's the prognosis? In veterinary medicine, cases of gastrointestinal pneumatosis are not very common. But when you encounter one, it may present some challenges in terms of management and overall approach. I'm Igor Yankin, a board certified veterinary emergency and critical care specialist. And in this video, you'll learn my main takeaways from a newly published case series on gastrointestinal pneumatosis in dogs and cats. As I mentioned earlier, gastrointestinal pneumatosis is the accumulation of diffuse gas within the gastrointestinal walls. Depending on the location, you may encounter three different versions of this disease. Gastric pneumatosis, when the gas is located within the stomach wall. Pneumatosis intestinalis, when the gas is located in the small intestinal wall and pneumatosis coli, where the gas is located within the colonic wall. It is important to understand that this condition is diagnosed through diagnostic imaging only, and it is not a clinical diagnosis, making it tricky to suspect. There are two main theories explaining the accumulation of gas within the gastrointestinal wall. The bacterial theory suggests that gas producing bacteria invade the GI wall due to a defective immune barrier or mucosal injury. Bacteria such as Clostridium and Klebsiella both produce gas as a result of fermentation and have been identified in people diagnosed with pneumatosis intestinalis. The mechanical theory suggests that gas enters the GI wall due to trauma or an increase in intraluminal pressure, for example, secondary to GDV or gastroscopy, resulting in mucosal tearing. Alternatively, there may be damage to the mucosa due to the local ischemia or inflammation and the use of medications such as corticosteroids and chemotherapeutic drugs. Ingestion of hydrogen peroxide, especially in high doses, may lead to gastric pneumatosis as well, and has recently been described in a three-year-old dog who ingested approximately 10 to 20 mL per keg of 3% hydrogen peroxide. Now, we're going to switch gears and chat about a recently published retrospective case series on this topic. A recent study by Jones et al. examined 26 dogs and four cats with gastrointestinal pneumatosis, and that was the largest veterinary case series on this topic to date. The cases included in this paper were accumulated over the course of 11 years from two universities and one private referral veterinary hospital located in the UK and US. Though case series don't provide definitive treatment protocols, they offer valuable insights into rare conditions like this. The diagnosis of gastrointestinal pneumatosis was made based on abdominal radiographs, ultrasound, or computer tomography. So let's dive into the main findings from this study. First, the location of the gas. The most common side was the stomach in 19 cases. The colon was the second most common site in eight cases. And the small intestine had only two cases. And both patients, unfortunately, didn't survive. Additionally, seven animals had pneumoperitoneum. In other words, free gas in the peritoneal cavity. And four had gas in the hepatic pora vein. Location of Pneumatosis was not associated with mortality in the current study. However, the numbers of animals in each location group were small, and there were only two dogs with pneumatosis intestinalis. 
Therefore, statistical analysis could be skewed in this case. So gastrointestinal signs were common with vomiting reported in 57% of cases, diarrhea in 43%, and abdominal pain in 63%, all animals with this disease. There were a total of 17 animals with gastric pneumatosis, and the most common associated conditions were the following. First, recent surgeries or procedures in seven animals, GDV in four dogs, and other less common conditions included acute hemorrhagic diarrhea syndrome, parvovirus, pancreatitis, hepatopathy, and cholecystitis. Of the eight animals with pneumatosis coli, in other words, gas within the colonic wall, three patients had acute hemorrhagic diarrhea syndrome, two had a recent procedure, and others had enteropathy, hepatopathy, colitis, and ulceration. Of the two animals with pneumatosis intestinalis, one had recent trauma resulting in intestinal herniation, and the other had enteropathy. Now, we're going to focus on medical versus surgical treatment in these patients. And in the current study, five dogs underwent surgical treatment, while the remaining cases were treated medically. Three of the five surgically treated cases were diagnosed with GDV, and these dogs had gastric necrosis on visual inspection of the stomach during surgery. One dog diagnosed with severe pancreatitis, spontaneous pneumoperitoneum, and gastric pneumatosis underwent exploratory ciliotomy due to concerns about suspected gastric necrosis and extrahepatic biliary obstruction. However, the stomach cirrhosal wall appeared grossly normal during surgery, and the source of the free peritoneal gas was not identified. One dog with nematosis intestinalis resulting from trauma and herniation of the small intestine underwent exploratory ciliotomy with a resection and anastomosis between the proximal jejunum and distal ileum. None of the cases underwent exploratory ciliotomy solely based on a diagnosis of gastric pneumatosis. The remaining 24 gastrointestinal pneumatosis cases were managed medically. Repeat imaging was performed in 11 of 30 cases, and the gastric pneumatosis was noted to have resolved in six cases. What about survival rates in the study? Of the dogs that underwent exploratory ciliotomy, one of five or 20% survived to hospital discharge. Of the medically managed cases, 13 of 24, 54% survived to hospital discharge. The overall survival rate for dogs and cats diagnosed with gastric pneumatosis was 47%. A previously published smaller case series of five dogs and cats with gastric pneumatosis reported a survival rate of 40%. In people, the mortality rate for gastric pneumatosis varies depending on location and patient population with rates reported between 21 and 50%. So, what are my main takeaways? First, gastrointestinal pneumatosis is a relatively rare condition in dogs and cats. Over an 11-year study period, only 30 cases were diagnosed at three referral institutions. Second, gastrointestinal pneumatosis is a diagnostic imaging finding rather than a clinical diagnosis. It can be diagnosed by abdominal radiographs, ultrasound, or computer tomography. Third, the presence of gastrointestinal pneumatosis alone does not warrant surgical intervention. However, when combined with other findings such as GDV, septic peritonitis, or full thickness necrosis, surgical intervention may be required. Finally, the prognosis largely depends on the underlying disease and other comorbidities.